Hello Taurus and welcome to my channel Tarot by Gabrielle. This is going to be a general reading for Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus placements, looking at your connection between you and the person that you are dealing with and needing to learn the most from right now. We're looking at all three sides of the connection, so we'll pull energy for your energy toward it, their energy toward it, and the energy in between the connection. The concept being that there are three sides to every story, so looking at you know your perspective, their perspective, and this higher level unbiased perspective in the middle. The middle section um, and the purpose of the middle section is to look at the deeper purpose of the connection and the best way for you to move forward in order to align further with your higher self. Friendly reminder that these are um, just general readings, so they are not here to resonate fully for everyone and they won't resonate fully for everyone. So do please remember to take what does resonate and helps your personal situation and leave what does not. On that note, the whole reading can be reversed. If that is the case for you, that's totally fine and totally normal. Again, the point is to take what helps leave what doesn't. Any information on the extended reading or on booking a personal reading or coaching session with me is in the description box below. All right, Taurus, let's jump on in. Let's see what we are dealing with here. This is between you and the person that you are dealing with and needing to learn the most from right now. Taurus, let's start with your side of this connection. Confusion. I feel like things in this connection feel very up in the air for you. Um, and I also feel like there's kind of this energy of not really knowing what to make of things. Um, almost as if there are some things, it's, it's like you maybe you don't have all of the information to make a decision. That could also be something here. Let's see what this person's energy toward you is. Connection. Oh, whoa, whoa. Contract. Detachment. Interesting. Um, I feel like this person definitely feels a connection to you. I feel like um, you and this person kind of have one of those maybe even unspoken connections. It's like it's definitely there. It doesn't even really need to be like talked about kind of thing. Um, however, with this detachment card, and I feel like this is where the confusion comes in, is you're like, I know that they have feelings for me like we have this connection you know we have this um this deeper kind of thing between us but then they're so detached I feel like they almost are in this place of um acting almost maybe indifferent in a way now this contract card is interesting to me this is like they could be caught up in something else or um this is some sort of like destined soul contract here either way i feel like you can be certain that that connection that you feel between the two of you is very real however i think that this the way that this person acts it's like it, it causes you to kind of second guess what's going on here so let's look at the truth of this connection now that contract could also mean like there's maybe marriage involved um or like I said, they're caught up in something else, which is creating this detachment. Quality time and growth. Oh, and deja vu. Quality time, growth, and deja vu. Now this quality time card is interesting. I feel like when you are together, like when you're in the same room, you know, I feel like things are good. And it feels like that connection really has a chance to be experienced. But then it's almost like when there's this, when there's that separation or when, you know, you guys spend time apart or whatever the case is, it's like there is that detachment, which I feel like is why you end up being like, I don't really know what to think, especially with this deja vu card. I feel like um, it's funny because you typically hear the term broken record, uh, but this is a scratched CD. You can't really tell, I don't think, in the camera, but this CD has scratches on it, um, which kind of causes things. It's like it's like repetition, like back, like the same thing over and over again with this person. I also feel like this connection is really pushing you um, both into growth in some way. Now, um, I you know I think that when we deal with any kind of connection in our life, that connection is going to push us to grow. Whether or not we choose the path of growth um, is kind of where connections um, 
well, you kind of, they're kind of determined because if both people choose to like face conflict um, or issues in the connection from this mindset of like, this is pushing me to grow in some way, then both, you know, people are showing up not just for the connection, but for themselves and then, you know, kind of able to make it work from there. But however, problems start to arise when like one person is really committed to making the connection work, but the other person um, is very detached, right? And, and, it, and it feels like that's where things start to get a little bit complicated is you're like, I know that they care about me. I know they care about this connection. I know they love me. But like, why the hell are they so withdrawn? And I think that that leaves you not really knowing what the best move for you is. Um, before I clarify, I actually want to get the overall theme here. Overall theme of this reading. Between Taurus and the person they are dealing with and needing to learn the most from right now. And I feel like like what that quality time card was kind of saying, and again, I think that the confusion where it really stems from is um, sometimes this person is very like, like present and invested in the connection. And like I said, maybe it is when you guys like spend time together or when you maybe even, you know, get away from everything. It's like, it's very easy to like the connection just feels good. But then anytime there is any distance, even if it's like healthy distance, because any kind of connection needs to have some level of distance and space, right? Um, you know, some form of individuality, then things start to get complicated because then you have inconsistencies with you don't love me. So I feel like there's inconsistencies in maybe what this person says and then how they act and then you turn around and it makes you feel very unloved because you're like, if you did love me, then you would be more consistent or like if you did care, then you would do these things. Um, but then it's like, but you know they care because of the way that you feel or like you feel their energy. And I think that that has created a lot of complications in this connection because you're like it's there like I'm very connected to this person but for whatever reason you know they're acting however they're acting here um, and I think that that is probably um, what is leading to kind of because this deja vu card to me really speaks of like cycles a cycle that keeps repeating um, that kind of leaves you confused, which can be like someone saying something, but then not backing up with actions or, I mean, it could, it could mean so many different things, but let's, let's dive into this a little bit deeper. Let's clarify this confusion card for you, Taurus. This is Taurus's energy toward the person they are dealing with, needing to learn the most from The Three of Pentacles in reverse. Strength. Ooh, okay. I feel like this is what makes it hard. Is I feel like you, um, I do feel like you're very confident, Taurus, and what you bring to the table and what you're looking for in a connection. And I feel like what is hard is sometimes this person is very much that. It's like they do show up in a way where you're like, yes, like this is what I need. This is what I'm looking for. But then with this three of pentacles in reverse, I feel like then on the flip side, there are a lot of times where you're left with like a lot of questions. It's like, well, you know, on Tuesday they acted this way, but then Thursday, like they started doing this. And then today, like, I don't even know. <laughs> and it just, it's like you're, you're maybe getting into like say psychoanalyzing or trying to like really read into actions. And I feel like there are, this person has left you with a lot of questions, especially because I feel like they are like at some, sometimes very, like very much what you're looking for. And then other times very much not, which again, that's going to start to make you wonder like, well, what did I do wrong? Did I say something or, you know, did, did they, is there someone else or, you know, and it's going to get you really stuck in your head. And I feel like that's kind of what has happened here with this confusion card. Now let's see what this person is dealing with. Cause again, they have that contract card. This person's energy toward Taurus.
Nine of Pentacles, the Hangman in Reverse, Nine of Wands in Reverse. Okay, so yeah, wow. Okay, um, with the Nine of, and then you have the Lovers in Reverse and the, the Ten of Cups on the bottom here. So I feel like this person sees in this connection like exactly what they want exactly what they desire it's almost as if like this they they see you as this is the person I want to build a life with or I want to be with or this is like someone that means a lot to me but then knight of wands in reverse self-sabotage now I, the self-sabotaging aspect of any anyone who self-sabotages is, is, is coming from this place of believing that they're not good enough right um self-sabotage is an act of like basically the opposite of self-love. And it usually starts to happen when somebody gets afraid that they're going to fail anyway. So it's like, why would I take the risk and fail when I could just self-sabotage altogether? And this happens a lot in connections when somebody isn't used to like experiencing strong connections with someone and they don't know how to handle it, especially if it's something very real or if it's something very raw or vulnerable, like it can really spook them and it can cause them to act in a way that goes against what they desire. It's like they desire love, but yet they don't feel good enough for it or capable of it or whatever the case is. So then the, their actions go against what it is they really desire. And that's where the confusion is happening is you're like, well, they say one thing and they act another and you're like, what's real? Like, what do they really want? And the answer is, well, they want this connection to work with you, but it's a little bit more complicated than that because, you know, one of the things that I've certainly learned about relationships is that it does take two people being very willing to do the uncomfortable stuff, to work on themselves, to heal, to, you know, have uncomfortable conversations, to drop the defensiveness and be able to be vulnerable and take accountability and all the things that, um, are really, really difficult to do and a lot of people spend lifetimes running from because it's hard. It's, it's a very hard thing to try to address, you know, what you need to work on, not just for someone else, but for you. And I think that when that happens, when something is very real and there is like an, a deep connection with somebody and they aren't ready to face those things about themselves, they're not going to be willing to do the work, not only for themselves, but for you too. And so that's why instead of actually addressing, I don't really feel lovable and here's the reasons why and I need to address those reasons and I need to heal them. Instead, it's, I feel uncomfortable and I don't know how to handle this. So I'm going to do, I'm going to self-sabotage. You know, I'm going to act in according to, in accordance with my fear and with my insecurity instead of trying to consciously override that with growth. And I think that a lot of that can be really difficult when you're dealing with someone who's struggling in that way. Because again, you know that they love you, you know that they care about you, but it's almost like they're not acting in the way that they need to in order for this connection to work or in order for you to get what you need out of this. Clear, truth in between this connection between Taurus and this person, deja vu. The chariot and the six of swords. These are two um, energies of like moving forward. The seven of cups. Okay, Taurus, I feel like you're like, I don't know what the hell to do. And I feel like you're coming, you're, you don't know what the hell to do because I feel like you don't know what the hell uh, this person is doing. And so you're like, I don't know, like, are they doing this because they suck or are they doing this because they love me but they don't know how to accept love? Like, there's so many, I feel like, again, questions, right? Which is going to leave you with trying to, to like, almost um, overanalyze the situation, like I kind of said, to try to figure out, okay, where are they at so I can know where I'm at? And I feel like, it's actually a lot simpler than that. Um, because honestly, at the end of the day, somebody who loves us and somebody who knows how to love us and who is willing to do the work to love us well, those are two different things. And we need to be willing to not only be open to someone loving us, because of course someone loves you, right? You're lovable. You bring a lot to the table when it comes to your connections, but it's also about making sure that you're setting standards for yourself that not only are you being loved, but you're being loved well, and you're being loved in the ways that you need to be loved and that you're being treated, you know, in a way that you deserve to be treated. And I feel like you're wondering what to do because you're trying to figure out where they're at, but I feel like there's a need to really 
stop kind of some sort of cycle in its track so that you can step out of trying to figure out what's going on with them and really focus on what you need because that at the end of the day is the only thing you have control over. But let's dive a little bit deeper. This is for Taurus's side of this connection. But I do feel like there is a deeper purpose here. I feel like there is kind of like more to what's going on than meets the eye that probably is adding to a lot of like the confusion is you're like, well, it's not so black and white and it never really is. But I almost feel like there's a need to kind of simplify what's going on here. This is Taurus's side of this connection. There's the sun in reverse. There's the ten of swords. I mean, damn, Taurus. This is, I feel like this has been a very difficult, very painful situation for you. And there's the strength. And you know what? I like that I still am seeing the strength not just once but twice upright. Because I feel like this is very much this energy of like, I, um, I, I like not letting this, you know, dim your light or take away from your worth, uh, which uh, sometimes when we're dealing with people who, you know, aren't necessarily treating us all that well, it can really affect ourselves, how we view ourselves, what we believe we're worthy of, but I feel like it's not. And I think that that is something you should be really proud of. Um, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this has been really hard. With the Sun in Reverse and the Ten of Swords, I feel like there has been some sort of betrayal. There's been some sort of um, abandonment, like which I guess could still kind of be a form of betrayal. And I feel like that this continues to happen. And I think this continues to happen whenever this person starts getting spooked. Now, the problem is I think that you... Um, you are needing, you're trying to figure out, is this connection good for me? Is this what's right with right for me? Like I keep feeling pulled back to this connection and this person and or I've been with this person for so long. We've been through so much. Like there's so much more to the story, right? There always is. But if you break it down, if you break down what's happening here, you're needing way more than what this person is currently giving you or at the very least, like, you deserve consistency. You deserve somebody that you know is going to be there for you, that you know is going to show up, that you know when you spend time together and have like a fun night together that they're going to be there the next morning. Like you deserve somebody who isn't just there when things are fun and easy, but who is there when things are hard and you're in the trenches together. And that's where like true partnership really comes into play is, you know, knowing that somebody is going to be there with you through the good and bad. And I feel like this person, it's like, it's like sometimes they are there through the good and bad, but sometimes I feel like they're completely, like their actions are just completely misaligned with what it is they desire, right? But that makes it hard for you because you're like, but they desire this connection. They love me. They care about me. And I feel like that makes things so hard for you to really navigate because you're trying to figure out what to make of their behavior and I think that that's where right now like what you're being asked to do especially with this two of wands is to separate your journey from theirs and stop looking at this from this place of you you know feeling like you need to fix them or change them or heal them in some way and try to look at this from this place of I'm tired of being hurt what can I do to make sure I I protect myself because you know, you are still, I feel like you are standing in your power. I feel like you are coming from this place of knowing your worth. And I feel like you, because again, I feel like you're very, you're very aware that you're not getting what you need here. But I also feel at the same time, it's like you don't know what to make of that, especially because um, you're trying to figure out what the hell is going on with this person. And I think that, you know, a lot of what is coming through is that this person I don't think necessarily means to do the things that they do. Like, I don't feel like they're coming from this place of trying to hurt you or that they are being intentionally the way that they are. I just feel like their behavior continues to affect you. And you're coming from this place of like, 
but I don't think I can handle this anymore. Like, I love you. I care about you. I wish things were different, but I don't know. It's like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. But I feel like then at the end of the day, something keeps pulling you back. There's like this connection, almost like this invisible string, if you will, that keeps drawing you back to each other. It keeps drawing you back to this person. And I think that it makes things even more confusing because you're like, even when I try to distance myself or I try to choose myself, like I just, it, it's hard because I keep feeling pulled Like I keep getting pulled back in. And I think that's probably because there is a deeper reason. Like there's a lesson here that needs to be addressed in order for some sort of cycle to close. But let's see what this person is dealing with connection with the Knight of Wands in reverse. Dude, I really feel like this person does love and care about you. Like, I don't feel like they, um, like I said, mean to do the things that they do. Three of Wands in reverse. The Eight of Swords. You know, I heard take the easy way out. Taking the easy way out. Like, almost like this person is being very um, cowardly in regard to this connection. Um, you have the Three of Wands in reverse. You have the Eight of Swords, the Ace of Cups, and the Lovers in reverse. So, it feels like this person's behavior is 100% a product of their own stuff. Now, what I mean by that is this is kind of this energy of playing it safe when it comes to this connection, when it comes to love in general. Now, this Eight of Swords is means that there's this reflection of this person kind of being trapped in limiting beliefs, meaning that there's probably a part of them that doesn't think that they can actually have what this connection is capable of. Um, especially if you have shown up with, you know, love and compassion and empathy and understanding for them, like they probably don't feel worthy of that. I mean, the lovers in reverse seeing it twice. I feel like that's absolutely what this is um, trying to say is it's like this person like doesn't feel good enough for you. And I feel like that is a result of their own guilt and shame and insecurity that they have not addressed. And so instead of addressing that stuff, I feel like they act in a way to try to protect themselves from getting hurt in the end. It's almost like that since this person doesn't feel good enough for what you provide, it's like, well, I'm probably, you know, I'm not good enough for this. So this person's probably going to end up hurting me or screwing me over, or abandoning me or betraying me in some way. So before that happens, instead of actually dealing with that and, and the fears and the insecurity security associated with that instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ruin it I'm gonna just I'm gonna just ruin it I'm gonna self-sabotage I'm going to you know implode and I'm just going to you know deal with it's like I'd rather just lose it now than deal with it later now 95% of our movements choices and decisions stem from our subconscious patterns okay 5% of our reality is actually a conscious level decision making and sometimes like I'm not sitting here saying this person is consciously going through the thought process of I don't feel good enough for love so I'm going to self-sabotage like I'm not saying that that's what they're doing I feel like one of the the things that I have learned is that we are either making unconscious decisions or we are consciously deciding to override our unconscious patterns and our unconscious patterns are are there to essentially protect us in a way it's kind of the ways that we've learned to act in order to survive in this world and when we've been through a lot sometimes those subconscious patterns can turn us very selfish because our decision making becomes how can I survive and how can I make sure that I protect myself you know from getting hurt and that's why you often hear the saying hurt people hurt people it's unconscious decisions that hurt people make hurt people um, you know, you, other people's pain is not our burden. It doesn't mean we shouldn't have empathy for it. it. doesn't mean that we shouldn't, you know, try to understand where they're at. But it certainly means that we should never take it personally. Because how somebody acts and the way that they, um, you know, the decisions that they make and the way that they treat us says one, like, it, it says way, way, way more about them and how they feel about themselves and their relationship with their, themselves than it does about us. And I feel like the more, that's why I said, I feel like there's this need to really separate your journeys here and to not focus so much on what this person needs 
especially if you do feel that strong connection and you have like a lot of empathy or understanding toward them, that can leave you feeling like guilty almost for making decisions that are best for you or setting boundaries or whatever the case is. And so basically what I'm getting at is this person, the way that they're acting is about them. And there is a chance in this connection. There's obviously potential here. Both people very much care and love about the, very much love and care about the other. But the question is, is this person going to heal? Is this person going to address these things that they need to address in order to show up for this connection? Because yes, they love you, but are they willing to love you well? Yes, they care about you, but are they willing to do what it takes to actually show up in this connection to make it last and make it sustainable? Um, and I feel like the answer to that is very much just going to depend on this person's situation and ultimately how you kind of handle things. You know, enabling somebody's self-sabotaging behavior often we think is like what's best for them but sometimes that actually ends up putting us in a position of carrying the burden of their past wounding instead of kind of holding them accountable for that but the hard part is when we're holding somebody accountable for the ways that they hurt us we are also creating boundaries that say I deserve and I need better which is really hard when we fear losing somebody because we think that if we set a boundary that is like betraying them in some way um, but I feel like this continues to happen over and over and over again. And yes, like they don't mean to do it. I do feel like they have a lot of feelings for you in this connection, but that still doesn't make it okay, right? Unconditional love does not equal unconditional tolerance. And we have to learn to stop tolerating the behaviors of others in order to learn to actually love ourselves, unconditionally. Unconditional love is not just about extending it towards other people. It's about making sure that we are extending it toward ourselves too, which sometimes means putting ourselves ahead of other people. And I don't mean this in the sense of like, screw everybody else's needs. Your needs are all that matter. Um, of course, I don't mean that, but your, it's also not screw your needs. Only everybody else's needs matter because at the end of the day, you can only show up for other people's. I said this in a reading I did yesterday. Um, but you can only show up to the to uh, for other people's needs to the extent that your needs are being met because you cannot pour from an empty cup. So if your needs are not being prioritized, you're eventually going to get to a point where you're like, I have nothing left to give because I've continued to pour myself into somebody who continues to hurt me. And I'm wondering why, you know, things won't change. So if you're trying to figure out what the right answer is for you, I feel like that's going to come down to what is going to be best um, for you, meaning like what is going to protect you from this person and their self-sabotaging behavior in the meantime. And, and that can kind of open you up to like conversations about healing and growth and, you know, change and things of that nature. So I feel like there, it's like, it's again, I keep getting this. It, it's like, you need to simplify your answer. It's like the answer is way easier than you think it is it's just over complicated by like trying to understand where this person is at what they're thinking what they're feeling when in, at the end of the day what are you thinking what are you feeling you know how does this connection consistently make you feel because your answer is going to lie in that answer right there it's not about how things could be if this person got their shit together right because that could take God knows how long. It's about how are you feeling about where things are at right now and are you is that good enough for you? All right, we're going to hop on over to the extended. You have deja vu with the seven of cups. And again, this is like, I don't really know what to do. We keep ending up in the same place. So I feel like this extended is going to be kind of uh, very guidance focused on the on the way for you to kind of find some clarity here. So diving into the deeper purpose of the connection and then the best way for you to move forward in alignment with your higher self. And then I have an advice card to pull from you from your spiritual team at the very end. Thank you so much, Taurus, for your support of my channel. Ooh, excuse me. I do hope that this reading helped and resonated with you in a way that you were needing today. And as always, Taurus, I wish you nothing but love and healing and all of the wonderful things that you deserve and desire on your journey moving forward. Right, bye, Taurus.